Welcome Flip Clock fans. I'm in a place that in the past I've called the dungeon and this is where I store some uh, flip clock stuff. I'm going to be all the stuff I'm going to be showing you has flip clock related stuff in it. And the reason I'm doing this is someone asked me if I've ever thought of doing a walkthrough. Now I am going to go upstairs and and show you my my on display clocks. Um but I wanted to uh, get give you a little example of my madness here. Um it's just what I'm doing. I'm not trying to show you this to to show off. Um the bottom tote doesn't have flip clocks in it. That's got a uh, old uh, record player stereo. All that's that's got flip clock related stuff, not full of flip clocks. But uh, so there's some bubble wrap in there, but a lot of manuals and stuff like that. Uh, again, it's just what I do. I got into this years ago when I started restoring clocks. For um, I was making some money off of it. Not not a lot. It's hard to make money off of it, but. Uh, and I, so uh, when I was doing a lot of that, I did a lot of uh, Groundhog Day clocks and Back to the Future clocks back before they were really ridiculously priced. So I've got a lot of parts, a lot of um, extra parts. A lot of these clocks um, I got for a steal really compared to today's prices. And then some of them are parts clocks because I, I restored a clock and I had to get an extra clock and these are the parts. Now... Um, so this mess here is a lot of like um a lot of like clock parts a lot of um transformers and stuff like that it's just, it just looks like an electronic mess in there but these two here the big large ones those are full of good clocks uh and i mean like good to where you could pull them out and use them uh sell them uh some are high dollar clocks uh there's some cipher threes in there and and most go for a decent amount of money but I, I've got them organized now to where I can find them pretty quick. So, again, uh, what else is over here? Well, uh, these these are boxes of, uh, that's just a storage box. That's a left Amsterdam box. Um, there's more boxes from clocks. Those don't have clocks in them, but I kept the boxes because I thought they were cool. So there's just, just some a couple boxes of old clocks. Down here is just some parts and pieces. Uh, those are flip clock mechanisms. Those are brand new. Uh, there's probably seven or eight in there. And those are these are the parts I used to make neon bulb assemblies. Those three boxes are. Um, I got I got a really good deal one time on some vintage uh, bulbs. So these are neon glow bulbs. Those are green neon glow bulbs. These are two, and these are, I don't get much use out of these. These are actually, um, that's actually some uh, neon glow bulbs, but I don't like the output. That So I don't use them very often, although sometimes I steal the resistors off of them. So that's just some parts and pieces. And a lot of stuff, if I opened up this stuff, I could show you some of the madness. But uh, uh, as I'm probably, when I edit this video, I'll probably uh, be scrolling some of the clocks that are in, in the two, the two big ones, just to give you an idea of of the nonsense. We're gonna go upstairs now uh, after I clean up my work area, and go through Flip Clock Fans Studio, what I call Flip Clock Fans Studio or Flip Clock Fans Studios, and just kind of show you what I've got and why I've got it and why my collection is so, um, what some have called eclectic. All right, let's go on upstairs. All right then. Flip Clock Fans. We're back in what I call Flip Clock Fan Studios, and I haven't cleaned it up really good. I straightened some things up a little bit, um, but not a whole lot because uh, I've got some things I want to do tonight, and I don't. I don't want to pretend like I'm that neat. But um, what we're going to do is I'm going to go go through some things, kind of show you what's going on, um, how I take out in here in Flip Clock Land. This is my work area. It's a corner of the living room, so. This is all the clocks. I just like them around me. I just like the way I like it. This is my work area. And um, wife gave me a corner of the living room so I'd get off the kitchen table. The table I use is uh, solid maple. Um, we got one of these for our island. It's a long story. This one had some air, some mess ups in it. And so, well, I spent a lot of money for the island and, and I just complained about it. And they just gave me a new one and I could keep this one. So, um, so I, I finished it. I gave it a kind of a whitewash finish, and I use it for a work table, and it's solid. You could stand on it the way I built the frame. So what what I want to do is I want to go through some of this madness. That's my wife back there, my beautiful wife. 
Um, I like to see her. I don't often have a lot of plants, but that one hasn't died yet, so we'll keep that one. So I'll show you, show you what's going on here. That's a lot of my tools. When I'm doing videos, I'll, you'll see me reach out. That's where I keep most of my tools, and, and I use them quite often. Um, you'll see some of these, like this right here. This is a, a Zenith uh, Circle of Sound Clock. Uh, at some point I want to make a video about that because I've worked done some restoration on that. That's just a, a Radio Shack um, weather clock I found in, in Goodwill. It's just so cool looking. I had to buy it. It works great. So some of this stuff is um, kind of random. Uh, for example, the Lego birds. I, I like birds, so often there's a bird theme going on. That's a bird my son got for me. Well, I'm going to go through some of this stuff, and you're going to see what I mean. Um, when I say I've, I've got an eclectic collection now in flip clocks I'm, I'm sort of like the guy who gets a tattoo, but then he goes crazy and he gets a whole bunch of tattoos But they're all just different kind of tattoos, so That's just the way I like it. I I started out with with radios flip clock radios So there's there's the one that started everything. That's the Groundhog Day flip clock um and that clock is a Copal 101. That needs to go in storage. Sorry, Groundhog Day clock. Um, but that's the one that started it all. And then I moved into smaller clocks. Then I moved into um, curious clocks. So this may bore some people. And especially if you think I'm showing off. Um, I don't know how long it'll take. It's up, it's up to you if you want to hang around. But I'll kind of show you what I got. Just kind of randomly and why I've got it. So this here, and some of these you've actually seen in some of my videos before. So, uh, and I've done reviews of them. This is a um, Sony 8RC, what's it called? I should know that. But it's often called the speedometer flip clock. It looks, it looks like a speedometer, obviously. It was pretty popular with kids back in the day. And they're, they're hard to find in working condition. So uh, the Panasonic 6RC15. Uh, I had to make this out of two, so I've actually got another one for parts clock. I've made this out of two different clocks to get a good one. Not really a flip clock, but but uh, like I said, I, I like clocks that are digital uh, and everything. You, if you've watched any of my videos, you've seen this actual clock probably a hundred times. This is the Copal 227. I like them because they're neat little clocks, and I use it as a comparison uh, for size. I do have um, lots of little clocks. Probably my favorite little clock is, well, of, well, not really my favorite, but this is one of my favorites. This is a Copal 222. And when you see that online, it, sometimes it's hard to appreciate the size of it, how small it is. I probably should use that as a size comparison, but more people are familiar with this one. So this is the Copal 222 in, in orange, and I really like that one. I've got others um, in white. Uh, there's, I'm not going to go through all my clocks. I'm just going to hit the highlights and show you the ones I like. And like I talked, this is the Copal 225. Um, this one I'm probably getting rid of. It's a long story. I'm not going to have one anymore. That's sad. But I've got I've got this one's heading out to somebody. But it's 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 not my favorite copal. I don't like the shape of it. But it's a, it's a diminutive copal. So there it is. Talking about flip clock radios. This this one there is a video about this clock, uh, the Baycrest. Of course I don't have these memorized. The Baycrest HB23. This appeared on uh, Fringe, and there's a really, of course, I think it's really cool. I had a friend of mine, I, I know him just through online. He does voiceovers, and he did the voiceover for my video that I made about this clock, which I think it's fun. It's fun to watch. Um, I'll put a link to it, but I would recommend it. Of course, I would. I like that video. So going back to more random. So how does this happen? How do I get a hold of something like this? Well, it just caught my fancy, and I just waited until I found a good one. And this is a good quality. It's an Eglin. They call it a drum clock. It's really, really kind of strange. I don't know what the model number is offhand. It's, it's pretty decent quality. So if I'm going to get a weird clock like this, I'm always going to get one that's, that's good. I'm not going to get a junked up one. And speaking of that, 
this this is considered a good quality mystery clock oh, it's got some blemishes oh it's time to dust again um, tape measure clock is what people call it today but they didn't call it that back then it's called the uh, mystery clock and you just tell time by say 11 oh, 05 5 10 15 just like that um, this is the five inch version there's one in like a three and a half inch version which is, is exceedingly more rare uh, but if you look online, this is actually good condition. They're, they're really rusted. It's made by the Lux Manufacturing Company. It was probably a really cheap clock back in the day. But they're, they're priced today. A lot of Lux clocks are. They were mass produced, but a lot of people like those old Lux. And very different varieties there. So going into the more random, I do have, like I said, videos on a lot of these. I believe this is the flip clock that actually started it all in the United States. I've got I've done research on it, looked on newspaper articles, and it really hit the ground running in the United States. Um, it made a splash. People were amazed. It's the Copal 201. Now it's Japan's first flip clock is the Copal 101, but the Copal 201 is the one that really made a splash in the United States and really got things going. So that's why I wanted to have it for the historical aspect of it. This happens to be a really good model, a really good quality model. I'm not just saying that because it's mine. I, like I said, if I'm going to buy something like that, I'm going to make sure I get a good one. Um, you see the cast line on the front there. I'll just give you a tip. If you ever get one of these and you're trying to wash it up, that cast line will wipe off with water. It's on the back side, believe it or not. And, and some of these things that I tell you... Um, in videos are from experience and I hate to say it uh, with with all the stuff that I've done in the past um, I've had some horrible mistakes I'm actually recovering from one right now <laughs> oh, I'm not gonna tell you what happened it, it's a nightmare I'm doing let's not go there uh, maybe later when, when it's not so painful uh, again things happen bad things happen when you're working on clocks sometimes uh, but I'm recovering from it um, this is a cast line the mini mod um, really quirky look at the font I like that because of the font this is the orange one I have a white one it's up on the thing because I like the mini mod but I had to get the orange one because it's orange my my newest little gem is the Copal 101 so I do have the other 101 I showed you sitting on top of the Groundhog Day clock but this is my little gem because I've always wanted this color the gold face um, the Copal 101 is considered Japan's first flip clock, and whether you like it or not, uh, when it comes to flip clocks, Japan rules. Uh, Copal set the stage and set the standard for motors for flip clocks. Um, if you didn't use Copal uh, flip clock in your uh, motor in your clock, you had a clock that wasn't going to last 40 years like these. Um, those little Copal 2 motors are just fantastic, fast, uh, simple design and just run forever seems until they get gunked up so this is my little gem this is the Copal 101 again as you see I'm liking the little clocks now um, I'm not so much into the clock radios but again you don't everybody's different and I'll probably change as time goes on Copal is well represented in my collection uh, probably again because I, I believe that Copal really set the stage this is a Copal Castlon 701 and it's in uh, avocado green, but I love this because the face front looks like the inside of an avocado. That you'll see the numbers on the hours are darker, uh, but on the like um, the next set they're white. So so you can make you can do whatever you want. I, if I was running this clock all the time, I would have this set so that the, the the number the dark numbers would be during the day, not the night, because I want to be able to see it because it's cool to have two different numbers. But but there's no AM PM. You get to choose. Um, now normally this is I must have been turning this because if a clock in flip clock fan studio is not plugged in it's supposed to be set at one two three four um, that's why I don't go crazy so any of the clocks around here uh, you may notice if you if scanned around if you've seen something they're set at one two three four unless I've been showing somebody a clock I like the Copal 701 for a good first clock I'd recommend it. it's a good clock is built well um, but every clock now, I mean, they've gone crazy with the prices and flip clocks. I don't know if people are actually selling them at those prices or if they've lost their mind. Uh, many of the clocks I bought, I didn't have to buy at full price because uh, we hadn't lost our minds yet. Let's see if I can reach some of this.
this is a this is a very rare clock. It's hard to find these. Uh, I was lucky to find this one because I was someone had asked me about a clock that was in a Nicolas Cage movie, and of course I had to find out. I did a whole video on that, and I was fortunate enough to get the actual color of clock that's in the video. It's a Copal T7, I believe. Copal T7. It uses a tuning fork mechanism, which sounds really crazy. But that's, there's a lot of history about the tuning fork and how the tuning fork keeps time. And that was before quartz. So there's actually a little, 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 little thing that vibrates in there. It's a tuning fork. Um, so no battery, of course, because I don't want to spoil it. And you see it's one, two, three, four. It does work. All of these up here work, and they work well. I do like the battery clock, so that's why this is battery. Uh, speaking of that, I've got another battery. This, this is my Seth Thomas um, Model 796, and you see Speed Read. Everything that was not like an analog clock, uh, Seth Thomas labeled Speed Read. So you'll see Speed Read, Speed Read, Speed Read. Uh, it was the thing of the day, so you don't have to try to tell time. Um, this one is battery operated, and I like that. I like the look. It looks like a 57 Chevy or something like chromed up 57 Chevy. Speaking of, and I've got other clocks that are battery, of course. Now you notice I didn't do much prep. This is the famous Chifra 3. Um, they call it the Chifra 3. Uh, there's a way to say that properly. I'll dig up the font sound file. Ciao, flip clock fans. Solari Udine, Cifra 3. So I, believe it or not, I got on Fiverr, actually paid a guy to, to give me that sound um, so that I could know exactly how a person in Italy would say it. See, I lose my mind sometimes. Um, and that, <laughs> that chucklehead made me pay commercial rates because I was going to put it on YouTube, like as if I'm making money. But anyway, I went ahead and paid him. Um, and if you're that chucklehead, no offense, that's a term of endearment in the United States. We call people we really like that. And jack wagon, too, is a term of endearment. But that jack wagon chucklehead made me pay money <laughs> so he could say chifra tre. Anyway, so this is the, this is the new chifra tre, and, uh, which means it's a new release. I forget when they did that, 2012 or something like that. I'm not sure. They re-released this. There's dust on the inside, too. It gets weird dust when it flips. Uh, runs on batteries. I do have one from the day. Um, you can't tell much difference. So this is the battery operable one from the day. I've done a little restoration on it. Um, it's vintage. And uh, it appears in the Museum of Modern Art. Now that's where you get, oh, I've done a video on that too as well, where um, people call this the Holy Grail um, of flip clocks. The Holy Grail of flip clocks, and that's nonsense. Uh, I've got I own one, two, I own five. It's not the Holy Grail. Um, that's just ridiculous. The only reason this got super famous was because the Modern Museum of Art decided to have a display of how of the flip clock, and they chose this. I believe because of a lot of reasons and a lot of political reasons probably because the copal clocks were much much better as far as i'm concerned but again i respect it don't get me wrong um of course i mean i've got several but it's not the holy grail you want to know what the holy grail flip clocks would be the actual clock that they used in the movie groundhog day not a not one of them the clock that would be the Holy Grail. First of all, because it doesn't exist, they probably got rid of it. And if you found it, it would be the only one. To call something the Holy Grail is ridiculous. It's not the Holy Grail. It's a sought-after clock. It's an awesome clock, but it's a loud clock. And, and Shoot, yeah, I like this clock. Don't get me wrong. I'm not trying to put it down too much. I'm just putting it in its place. It's not the Holy Grail to me. It's a, it's a nice clock, but it only got famous because it was in, put in the museum. Um, that's it. To me, if you wanted the... A uh, clock that, w w again, I showed you the 201. I believe the 201 would, should be a seminal clock. It should be the clock that says, hey, this is when things changed um, for the world. And again, we thought this was the way of the future, or they did. Uh, I was alive back then, of course. Uh, oh, it's just digital. And then it disappeared. It was a clock of the 70s. It was technology that, was, that faded away um, very quickly. So we're, 
we'll go back in time here and look at a really old clock. So these these clocks predated the um, modern flip clock, which well you can't really call them modern flip clocks. So now they make flip clocks today that are pretty awesome. We have we have one of those um, in flip clock fans. It's the uh, Lef Amsterdam. That's sitting up there. It's a huge clock. So that's the Lef Amsterdam. That would be considered a modern flip clock. Um, very large clock. And and they make a lot of other clocks that are modern clocks. So so we will talk about the this clock here, this New Haven flip clock, as as predating our vintage clocks. Our vintage, basically 70s. I mean, you're talking late 60s, the Cifra. Um, Late 60s, the Copal 101 that I showed you earlier, the Copal 201. Um, that, and the, but mostly the decade of the 70s. This predates that. So this is actually Depression era. It's 1936. Um, so they had the flip clock. It, it existed back then, but it didn't catch on. So this is one variant uh, of the New Haven flip clock. These are hard to come by. These are very rare and inexpensive. Um, so I've got both models. This is one is is actually rare, more rare, but most people tend to like the other one. Which is this one. Again, if you've seen any of my videos, you've seen most of these clocks in one form or another. So let's get a better look at this. So this is the one that, that most people that want and that I wanted for the longest time. Uh, this is a Plato clock. If you haven't seen my video on the Plato clocks, I'd ask you to go see that. I spent a lot of time and work on that, and um, it it really puts the Plato clock into place about what its historical relevance. Um, this these are old clocks. This this was um, they started coming out in like 1904, and so this is actually an antique. It's a real antique. Um, of course, my kids probably think these are antiques and. Perhaps they are now, but the Plato flip clock's got a lot of history, and it's a prized possession of mine. This Plato clock, it's but you wouldn't be able to tell because it's so dusty. Uh, again, it's probably time to start dusting again. So that's the Plato clock again. One, two, three, four. So that's that's one of my favorites, of course. Now we'll go to some wind-up clocks that are so ridiculously loud that you um you really couldn't run them they just they make a lot of noise and these were made probably by the same company Let's see if i can show you the error sometimes you'll get is people say the model 16506 and and it's incorrect because this is just a part number that japan used because there are other clocks with the same with that share the that same number it's not a model number it's a number of the, of the case and, and possibly the mechanism but, it's pretty good quality of, of this of this type. I've got another one of Bradley. And and again, you can see how dusty these are. It really needs some work. I've showed you this before, what I used to dust them and how I used to dust them. See, a lot of these clocks pick up scratches because people would just wipe that dust off. And and I've shown this before. Um, it's called Koala Cleaner, safe for all coated lenses. You can get it on Amazon. And that's what I use to clean clocks. So that we this they, whatever's on there is not gonna scratch. And I'll, I'll even clean the 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 rest of the, the bases that way. So that's how I, I clean flip clocks if, if you're wondering so anyway this Bradley what I've noticed is these are selling for ridiculous prices I, I didn't they didn't give me this it wasn't given away but I'm just shocked now I mean these things I've seen it for two hundred dollars and and stuff so um, I don't know if people are actually buying them at these prices or if the sellers have just lost their mind or are just seeing what sticks This is just absurdity. This is a clock I saw. I've never seen one like it before. It was so quirky I had to have it. Uh, Sunbeam. So you, you get from back in the day, 
where you'd have a company that want their name on a clock. So Sunbeam was had done that. They've got Copal 101s with Sunbeam on them. So if you see a Sunbeam like that, uh, it's actually a Copal 101 that's just been branded. So Japan was making all these clocks and the companies were paying to get their name put on them. So this is a Sunbeam. Um, it's just because it's weird. I had to have it. And that's why I've got it. And that's where I talk about my my collection being, well, there's the spout that doesn't work, of course. Um, eclectic, it's just, it's just kind of all over the board as far as what I have here. Um, I haven't shown you everything, but I think you're getting the idea. I'll even get things like this. This is another Elgin. Elgin is a famous uh, clock company, but not, a lot, none of these clocks were actually um, were, weren't made by Elgin. They were contracted out and made by by a Japanese company. So, and speaking of that, I've got suspicions. Like a lot of the clocks that were made, for example, this one's got a nice motor in it, but I think Seth Thomas made a mistake when they were contracting out their clocks. So here's a cube clock. I've got other... Uh, type Seth Thomas like this but this is a cube clock and the motor I don't like the type of motor that's in here I don't think it lasts as, as long as the regular Copals so they must have gone with a different manufacturer than, than most everybody else so they were trying to go a different way I guess which is unfortunate because a lot of their clocks don't don't last as Seth Thomas clocks don't last as long as some others so uh, Seth Thomas cube this is pretty classic it comes in four different varieties I've got the blue and yellow I'm looking to get the white and um, wood grain at some point. It'll happen in one day. And as far as the quirky, that's why I had to have this one. Um, the, to just just to say, you know, 12, written out 12, made by West Clocks. Needs dusting. We've talked about the history in other videos about the there's a relationship between um, Seth Thomas and West Clock. They they were actually owned by the same company. At, at eventually, they were by the same company. This one here, I would think West Clocks. That's when they were in Illinois. But see, they they combined forces um, in 1931, and this doesn't go back that far. Um, that's the only reason I have it. It's more like a rolling wheel clock. It's not a true flip clock, uh, often called cyclometers type clocks. And again, to me, it doesn't matter anymore. I go with what makes me happy or what I just wanted at the, at the moment. So that's how my collection rolls, really. And this is talking about more modern flip clocks. Um, wow. What is that? There's no telling, because I, I do a lot of work over here, there's no telling what I get into. This is no longer made, it's a Centrios, but you can find it online sometimes. And it was uh, probably what, uh, I don't know, 2000 something like that. This is This is a good clock. It's very solid. It runs really well. I, I use it to keep time, although it seems to be behind my others right now. Um, the ones I use to keep time, real time. Um, so if you ever see that, it's uh, well made. It's a plastic front, but uh, solid. It's just something that I, I use and I, I, I used to keep time. It's just one of the ones I use. Um, sometimes people ask, well, do you run your clocks? Should you run your clocks? Is that going to slow them? Is that going to make them, um, you know, not last as long? Well, I wouldn't run these. I just won't. I might run them every now and then to make sure they still work. Uh, this is interesting because the, the little wheel moves there. The little, I might show you that. Um, you'll notice here, this is how old these are. This is a reproduction cord to try to look like what they did in the day. Back in the day, they would use they would wrap this with silk. Uh, that frayed over the years and became very hazardous and dangerous. Even some of the internals have silk, still have silk wrapped in here. Um, but they're still, they're safe and they're not moving around. Uh, so you have to get 
reproduction courts. And the funny thing is the, the, the people who really use these reproduction courts are people who collect fans. Um, yeah, fans. There's a lot of collectors of fans. So there's, there's working. You can see the little umbrella working. So this does work and it will flip again from depression era clock. Still working. So that's it. That's a little bit of my madness. That's um, You haven't seen everything I've got. Uh, again, uh, s sometimes I try to rot out, rotate out my display um, for my own purposes just because I want to look at them. But someday I probably will sell these. I like having them now. Sometimes people have questions about clocks, and a lot of times I'll have that part, and I'll pull it out, and we'll get it and, and talk about it. And that's, uh, that's what I like to do. I like to help other people um, learn about clocks. I like to help them fix their clocks if I can. But um, I try to answer the questions just because I enjoy doing it. So, so now you've entered into my madness. You've seen a little bit about how I roll or how I flip. And that's the way, that's the way it rolls. If you have any questions, uh, please don't hesitate to ask in the comments. If, you're, uh, if you like what we're doing, uh, consider subscribing it really helps me in, in throwing a thumbs up. It helps me know that what I do uh, makes a difference or is somewhat interesting. Well, thanks for taking the time.